it's quite clear I'm not a YouTuber. Just because I've got a YouTube channel doesn't mean I'm a YouTuber. Hi guys, um, so welcome back, or welcome to, I shouldn't be presuming you've been here before, YouTube training and all that. It's quite clear I'm not a YouTuber, just because I've got a YouTube channel doesn't mean I'm a YouTuber. I do the YouTube just to share and hopefully impart some of my small knowledge about building jet engines. Hopefully some of you get a, a kick out of it, but I'm definitely not a YouTuber. I'm not keeping up on the relevant topics and doing things about subjects that are going off in the world. It's just my jet engines. I'm sorry if the sound quality is not good. Um, sorry, if the, sorry if the picture quality is not that good. Um, but it's what it is. Before I get into what this video is about, and it's basically about the oil system and the control system. For those that are not interested, I'll just wait a second so you can all leave. Apparently most people leave after about 30 seconds of seeing me on the screen, which you don't blame them for whatsoever. But we're going to talk about my oil system <coughs> and the control system and hopefully share some information. Uh, flame tube, parts for the new engine coming together slowly and that's um, something I wanted to talk about briefly. I've thought long and hard about doing this and it was through a conversation the other day with a guy who's got nothing to do with the jet engines. I was actually selling some stuff on eBay and he came out to pick it up and saw what it is I did as a hobby and we got chatting and I said well this next project I'm building is just next level and I've uh, pondered the idea of doing this Patreon thing. Um, I can got my own ideas about it and he basically said no to be honest just do it he says what you're doing is unique um, people will probably want to share in what you're doing and be a part of it I says well I'll, what can I offer them back I said the best I can really offer them back is to put the names on the go-kart when it sets the world record at hopefully over 175 mile an hour and he said well yeah most people just won't want anything back they'll just want to be parts of it part of it so I'm I'm hoping that's that is the case that some of you wanted to just be part of it uh, I've worked out that basically if 3% of my supposed subscribers were to commit to £3 a month which is less than a frothy coffee in a posh coffee shop that's £3 a month for three months we'd have enough money to build the engine buy the go-kart chassis and pretty much we'd be there so I'm just saying guys if you want to see this happen it, it's an expensive hobby when you get to this level I've got a thousand pound basically tied up in the battery pack and you could say well you could do it cheaper not really not the density of battery and energy that we need in a small compact unit you can't do things half-baked when you're trying to do 175 mile plus um, it's just got to be done right and the only way to do it right is to spend the money where it matters a quality go-kart chassis have the machine the engine built properly and, and you can't be trusting on second hand or or parts the rotating group the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel there's another thousand pound there I will put a hundred percent 110% plus into everything that I'll do I will give credit to anyone that's willing to help me in this journey but it, it would be really nice if um, some of you just come along for the journey with me and we can do this together you can enjoy the fact that you can say to your mates well I helped build a world record project anyway enough said about that let's get on to my oil system I'm gonna to have to move the camera focus on the oil system and I'll explain it all to you how I like to build the system why this system is uh, so much more than what we've built before so uh, give me a minute I'll set the camera up and edit it you, you won't see any change and then uh, we'll go on from there okay right thanks very much back in a second Alright, sat down now guys, give me back a bit of a rest. 
yeah, I've been having fun and games with my back. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but my psoriasis has cleared up, but I'm still in as much pain. Uh, I washed the car yesterday and uh, spent the rest of the day on the chair, not wanting to move, couldn't be back, and just literally said, You've done enough. So I took my painkillers and sat there in a happy grin, as you do. So, anyway, oil system, nothing mega complicated. Uh, group 1 gear pump, which to most of you won't know what a group 1 gear pump is, it's just a basic hydraulic gear pump. Uh, if you go on most hydraulic company sites you can ask for them. That's driven by a, a three phase uh, RC electric motor uh, and basically the way the oil is, is controlled, you've got the suction strainer there, um, some of you might have seen an earlier oil system I put and that had got a 90 degree bend didn't like that so I went with a swept bend you get better flow characteristics a 90 degree bend we would have sucked up more than ample oil um, but it's just better with swept bends uh, we've got a check valve here to stop the oil draining back when you switch the system off which for me it's beneficial it means you've, you've pretty much got oil there as soon as you start the engine it's not all drained back to the tank you're waiting for it to prime the pump up pump running dry for a few seconds um, never a good thing to run a gear pump without oil uh, and then here we've got basically a uh, it, it's literally just a hydraulic check valve which I've modified I've altered the spring rating and at the back of the the check valve you've got a small pneumatic actuator or pneumatic cylinder and what happens is the P2 pressure of the engine increases it pushes the rod out of the actuator which loads the spring up closes the check valve off and forces more oil to go towards the engine so when your revs or your engine gets up to like full pressure you've got full pressure oil when you back down at idling um, boost the, the oil pressure drops down you don't have to do it but it uses a little less energy because the batteries aren't having to work at full all the time um, I prefer to do it this way and then that there is a is the relief the top end relief that's the relief that sets the overall top oil pressure because there's no point in over producing pressure uh, again you're just using more energy up unnecessarily and um, that can be adjusted uh, for the new engine we're hoping that we're going to boost to at least 70 psi so then the issue is is we, we we need to keep the oil pressure at all times above that 70 I'd like to be at least running at 100 psi of oil pressure but there's no need to run anything else the oil will thin out so the pressure will drop back that will probably close and hopefully we can maintain a good oil pressure for the two or three minutes that the engine will be running at most I mean on a on a speed record attempt the engine probably won't be running for more than a minute 90 seconds because if you think about it if we're doing 175 mile an hour over a mile track you're going to have covered it in 30 seconds or probably less less actually yeah so you really just need to keep the optimum the oil at its optimum um, but as I say that's that there there that's the pressure line which goes to a gauge here which ultimately will go to the dash uh, but you don't really need to know um, your oil pressure providing you've set the oil system up right and the key thing on an oil system is to have a check a, a, a pressure switch and the pressure switch should be the, the, the first um, in line to all the power yes you've got probably an on off switch for your main power but the pressure oil pressure switch should be the thing that either lets the engine run or stops the engine for running which I'll explain again in a minute uh, and then we've got the the pressure line which is the air pressure from your, your engine but as I say I'll give you a quick demonstration of that in a second so uh, just bear with me while I put everything back in its place and we'll, uh, we'll go through it, through it from there It's a 
bit of a snug fit to get everything in. All right. I'm just going to rejig the camera again guys, if you can bear with me. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here and also see me, or can you? Yeah, I'll tell you what, give me a minute and I'll move the camera and then we'll be back. So right, you can just about see me. I think the top of my head's being cut off. If you couldn't see my head, it wouldn't be a major issue anyway. Uh, so let's just plug everything in. I've got my battery pack here. With them being lipos, they're in a, a steel box. I'm just going to disconnect this. I just want to illustrate something. Uh, so right, that's plugged in. Turn the main power on. Speed controller switched on. And yes, right. I'm going to turn turn the system on there. It's not the quietest of things, but I think you can just about see the gauges. So I just want to illustrate as you build the oil pressure up. Um, sorry, as you build the P2 pressure up, the oil pressure increases. So. Uh, just bear with the noise for a minute and I'll try and illustrate it. I hope my dad took my uh, compressor's full of air, I haven't checked, so here we go. Yeah, we've got oil pressure and I think you can see that. So I'm now going to dial in some air pressure. And as you'll see, pressure comes up as your air pressure which in effect is your P2 pressure and as you back it off and the engine's off and then we're at idle oil pressure again I can back lower that if I need to right just want to explain something about the control system I'm going to turn a bit talk a bit louder so you can hear me hopefully now that's the pressure, oil pressure switch disengaged. Now, this, I don't even see what I'm reaching for, but this is the, the switch that turns the main fuel on. Now, watch what happens when I try and turn the fuel and the igniter on. You can't see the light. Hang on, let me move the light. I don't know if you can see that. Put it there. Can you see it there? Tell you what, let me dangle it over there. You can see that light now. It comes on and it fires, but it won't stay on. Right, that's the oil pressure switch. Now, to connect the oil pressure switch and do it. So the engine started igniting and the fuel continues to run. The next one, let me demonstrate this. That is the afterburner. Right, let me turn off that one. Right, so that's the power, that's the lead that will go to the afterburner pump. I'm now going to press the button which will be on the steering wheel, which is for the afterburner pump. And look, it doesn't come on. Now this is a crucial safety thing. And I'll tell you why, because Richard Stavely and I very nearly got toasted because somebody inadvertently turned the system on and hadn't realised that the, the fuel switch for the afterburner was turned on. And as they were stood just about to start the engine up, the afterburner was full, filling with fuel and we were stood behind him. So ever since then, I've always put my afterburner on push-to-go switches and I've latched them behind the main fuel. So watch what happens now if I turn the main fuel back on. That comes on, that's the main fuel, you have heard the ignition fire briefly. But now, when I press that, 
I don't know if you can see this, but the light comes on. I don't know if you can see it now. Yeah. And then again, watch what happens if we lose oil pressure. See, main fuel goes off. So that's basically how I have things set up. Everything's locked behind the oil pressure. And if we lose oil pressure, it turns the engine off. Now, there's another thing that's been brought in with the new rules. So I'm just going to demonstrate this. You're going to have to wait. But watch what happens after 90 seconds. After I've just pressed that switch. That switch will be on the foot pedal for the afterburner. So you're at full throttle with the afterburner lit. And 90 seconds, this is probably longer than it needs to be, but this is one of the new rules that's been brought in by the UK Time Association and I believe the governing body that govern uh, all jet vehicles throughout the UK and around the world, America or wherever. Now, you've got to have a system that turns the engine and the afterburner off after you've set off on your full power run down the track. And I'm not sure, but I think it's because, I don't know where, but in the States or somewhere, I think they had an issue where the jet car set off and for some reason it wasn't turned off when it went over the line. So now, for safety reasons, they brought this new rule in. The new rules coming in as far as licensing, insurance, which on the surface you think are a hassle, but I think they're a good idea, because hopefully it will protect our hobby and other people. It will protect and show that people are competent to be doing what they're doing, they're safe in what they're doing, and hopefully, there you go, switches itself off. Main fuel switched off, it would be the afterburner switched off, because as you've seen, the afterburner is tied in. So now I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to close the video. Sorry about the noise. I hope you could hear me what I was saying. Um, thanks for taking the time to just listen to me droll on about all this. I hope some of it helps some of you. As I say, any, any questions, my email address is uh, on the YouTube play, page. Or you can get in touch with me through DIY Gas Turbines um, on Facebook. The link for the Patreon, if some of you guys do want to come along, do want to help me out, be part of this journey. Um, as I say, £3 a month for three months and we'll have enough money if 3%, that's 3%, that's 900 people out of 31,000 people just commit to that. It, 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 even if it's just for a month, you, you make a three, because you don't have to subscribe for a long period. But every little bit will help. It will make this thing happen quicker, um, and and get built and get it to the track sooner. And you can all be part of it. As I say, I will put everyone's name. There is two people, and I'm not going to mention them because I don't want to embarrass them. There's two people who all I've done is help them over the years. They've contributed already. Uh, obviously, I'm hoping more people will. Um, it'd just be nice to know that I'm not on my own as well other people want to see this happen so for now guys thank you keep safe and uh, hopefully talk to you soon bye